you so much for inviting me to speak at FSA Conf 2016. I'm, uh, I'm really just thrilled to be here. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about how to use Node.js streams. Today we're going to talk about streams. Uh, what are Node.js streams? I seem to work in Node just fine without streams. Why would I ever need them? And most importantly, what happens if you cross them? <laughs> this is the only question that I'm not going to be answering today. I really have no idea. You probably shouldn't try it. Uh, but seriously, folks, why do streams matter? Uh, Streams are basically a pattern that convert big operations into manageable chunks. They're really a, a core feature of Node, and they're the only way that we have to manage async I.O. operations efficiently. And they're totally necessary for running a server at scale, but fortunately, they're also really fun. Uh, this is a 10-minute talk, so I'm definitely not going to have time for a deep dive into streams. Instead, the, my goal today is just a high-level survey of what streams are and how they can be useful. And at the end, I'm going to give you a list of resources and tutorials that if you're interested, you want to work with them a little more, it will teach you how to use streams in your own workflow. So I want to start with a pretty simple code example. Uh, this is just a basic vanilla node server. All it does is it uses fs read file async to load up data.txt from memory, and then serve it as a response using res.end data. Uh, it may surprise you to learn that you're actually already using streaming uh, when you run this code. And that's because res.end is an HTTP method which uses streaming to communicate over the internet, because that's just the best way to communicate, uh, right? Because things happen in small chunks rather than all at once. Nevertheless, there's still a lot of room for improvement here, because what you're doing is you're loading data.txt in its entirety into your memory before you begin streaming it to your users. If you have lots of users with slow connections, you're going to be loading data.txt into your server's memory thousands of times simultaneously. And also, to boot, your users are not going to see anything for a couple of seconds while you load data.txt into your working memory before you start streaming it down to them. It's pretty lame, right? Uh, fortunately, there is a better way. And uh, it's a pretty small difference, but instead we're using fs.createReadStream. This is much better because now we're streaming not only from us to the user, but also from the disk up to our working memory. Also, our users are immediately going to start receiving little pieces of data as we read it from working memory rather than waiting for the whole thing to be loaded up uh, into our RAM. So, I'd like to pause here for a second and talk about what I think one of the primary confusions of streams was. I know it was for me, is, well, it's an async operation. So like, who cares, right? Like, Node is concurrent. It's going to take care of all of this, and I don't have to worry about it. The fact is that even if we as programmers, and I'm definitely guilty of this myself, think of async operations as just happening sometime in the indefinite future, it still has to get done, right? It's still a job that your server has to take on. So streams ensure that when that async moment arrives, our async operations use memory and bandwidth as efficiently as possible. Or in the words of James Halliday, who's kind of one of the big heroes of Node, streams make programming in Node simple, elegant, and composable. I think that sounds pretty cool. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit more about how to actually use it. Um, so this is a pretty simple line of code, but we're going to be using it a lot. So take a good hard look. These are both streams. We're taking a source stream, which is something readable, like our data.txt that we were reading up a little piece at a time. And then the destination is a writable stream, such as an HTTP response. You can think of these uh, as streams as a, as a succession of garden hoses that you're kind of hooking together as needed to perform arbitrarily complex tasks, hence the word pipe. Right? We're like piping from one stream to another. This is a lot like that pipeline character uh, which we looked at during foundations in, in the Unix operating system. Uh, so that's a lot of the beauty of streams is that you can have small, simple streams that do one job well and then hook them together to perform really complicated, powerful tasks. Streams come in three delicious flavors. Uh, there are readable streams and writable streams and duplex streams, which are both readable and writable and a special variety of those, which is transform. So let me just talk about each of those really briefly for one second. Readable streams can act as the source, but not the destination in source.pipe destination. Uh, remember that we're mostly using streams 
for refining our async operations, and usually that means I.O. So this readable stream source is our input. It might be on disk, it could potentially be in Norway, anywhere, but it's something that we're going to take and read and do something with. A great example of this is fs.createReadStream. Writable streams are the opposite. They act as the destination, but not the source, such as fs.createWriteStream is an example of that. Duplex streams are both readable and writable. You can think of these as being kind of like a telephone because they can receive data and then also send data. They can actually even enter into conversations with each other on different servers if you have them set up that way. Uh, a special variety of a duplex stream is a transform stream, which is most useful when you set it up in between two pipes from a readable stream to a writable stream. Uh, this is where piping really comes into its own because you can use a transform stream to perform any kind of operation. You might be doing something simple like converting your source stream into all caps. You might be doing something really complicated like compression or video encoding. But transform streams can handle all of that. So I want to talk a little bit now about why streams are so useful for performance and scalability. Uh, writable streams, at least the way that they're currently implemented in Node, have to actively send a signal back to the readable stream that they're being piped to that they're ready for more data. Uh, this might sound a, lot, a little confusing, but this is actually their most valuable feature because that means that if that writable stream isn't ready to receive more data, then the, readable, then the readable stream isn't going to be sending any more data to it, which is exactly how you'd want it to work, right? Like, why would you want to have that data in memory before you're ready to send it down the pipeline? The even cooler thing about this is that it's configurable. You can decide how full that readable stream is allowed to get before it's like, oh, please don't send me any more data. Uh, that could be like 40K, it could be 40 meg. It's whatever you want and whatever makes the most sense for uh, the current amount of working memory that you have at your disposal. We call this a high water mark, which I think is a great metaphor because it's like, how full is that stream pipe allowed to get before it's like, oh, please stop, no more input for right now anyway, until I can deal with some of it and then you can send me a little bit more. So you can really use this to specify exactly how you want your stream to work. So for an example, uh, I want to talk about uh, a project that our very own Joe Alves did at his last job, which was uh, uploading large video files on a regular basis, encoding them, and then hosting them. Uh, so these were huge video files in the gigabytes range. And it was important, how are we going to do this efficiently? Well, the answer is streams. Uh, the other thing that makes this kind of challenging is that all of these things happen at very different and kind of unpredictable speeds. So uploading from the client to the server in Norway happens very slowly because we have HTTP running internationally, right? Um, also, hosting, which is going from the server to our OS server, is also slow and unpredictable because it's happening in HTTP. In the middle, we have to do video encoding, which is actually pretty fast. Uh, it's, it's not a very time-consuming transformation. But we want to make sure that all of this is paced well so we don't suddenly end up with like 100 gig of material that we have to be holding in our server. That would stink, right? So the way that we do that is by using high watermarks to specify exactly when we're ready for, for more data. So since this connection is happening slowly, we can set a fairly low high watermark that as soon as it's full, we stop video encoding as soon as that video encoding fills up with data that it's queued, that it's not ready to send more, and sends a signal back down to the client, ah, please stop uploading for right now. We're a little bit backed up over here in Norway with our OS server. Uh, and what this means for the users is a really fantastic user experience because your upload bar is actually a good representation of when your video is going to be hosted, right? Like your bandwidth is throttled downwards. You're only uploading a little piece at a time. And then as soon as it finishes, that encoding's already done, which means that that hosting must have already been done because these high watermarks were all hooked up to each other. And then within seconds, your video is hosted. Also, nobody's eating up your connection to upload a video really quickly while then you like, sit for hours and wait for it to be encoded. It's pretty awesome, I think. Uh, so here are a couple of uh, further examples that, that, that you can use. In particular, I think the Stream Handbook is really valuable. This is hosted on GitHub. It's kind of the Bible of streams, uh, and, and it was definitely my main source for this talk. Highly recommend it. So go forth. Stream early and often, but most importantly, never ever cross them. Thank you guys so much.